Welcome, my gorgeous Scorpios. Um, this is going to be your October 2024 reading. Um, this is going to be for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. You could have planets in the sign of Scorpio. Um, I feel a lot of you might be intuitively guided. And, you know, I thank your spirit guides for that because I do read through my spirit guides who connect to yours. That's why sometimes a reading can reach so many people like it can apply to their situation i feel like because our spirit guides they know what's going on in our life um you could certainly be in love with the scorpio platonically or romantically um i know i am i have two special scorpios in my life one my daughter who is october 29th and i know a lot of you share her birthday and i just love that that means i already love you um, and my brother, who is November 6th, um, both both just such loving, caring souls, um, sometimes almost to a fault. But, you know, it's like they find their way. Anyways, um, so Scorpio, I am doing the readings a little early just because I am going to take a break in October. And I wanted to make sure everyone's readings were out. Um, but. You know, I feel like a reading will reach you in divine timing anyway. So whether it was meant to reach you early, maybe I was meant to do them early um, or whenever you find it to me, that's divine timing. Um, what else I was going to say? Oh, we are just like September. I'm going to do opposites again. So your opposite is Taurus. So I'm starting with you and then I'll do Taurus. Um, and I, I'm doing the opposites. First of all, I felt guided to do them in September. Um, something I've never done, but now that I've done it, I have to say, I love it because first of all, I can see the synchronicities. Um, and I do feel like we should pull from our opposite side, you know, like I'm a Virgo and, you know, Virgo can be very methodical and what have you. Um, where Pisces is our opposite and, you know, loving, nurturing, and Virgo could certainly use some of that energy and vice versa, by the way. So I'll be doing Tauruses or Tauruses after your reading. All right. So let's get into your reading. Um, I brought out the Romance Angels. Um, this is a company that I am partnering with and, um, they allowed me to pick out a few tarot decks and this is a deck that I had owned, but I did leave it with my daughter uh, when I moved back to where I'm at now. But I feel like love is always some part of our reading. Let's go ahead and use them. So we're going to use them like we did to Major Arcana's in the last reading, just as bullet points. Let's see what's going on in, in your love life. We, are, of course, are going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. I'm going to use the Guild of Tarot to clarify or go deeper. And then I also have this other deck. Um, I believe it's called the Celestial Tarot. That if we need more clarifying, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to bring them out also. But for your main spread, I'm going to use the Good Tarot. Really love this deck for you, Scorpio. Um, I don't use it that often. It's interesting, but... I do really love it, and it's interesting how it matches the color of my desk. So, let's go ahead and let's start with Mother Mary. Let's open up this reading officially. I'm going to bring the lid down. There we go. Everything is always pre-shuffled. But I do like to give it a shuffle or two with you here. So... You know, and I've been getting a lot of comments where people are saying, like, I feel like you were right in the room with me. I feel like you were speaking right to me. I was. And in my mind, I, you really are all around me. Like, we're just having one big conversation. Um, and I love that we can connect in that way. To me, that's our spirit guides. All right. Mother Mary. Mother Mary, for, whoa, okay. Let's take what's face up. Because that was way too many. Well, 
Hello, Miracle. Beautiful. Miracles. I trust in God to know the perfect solution to this situation. It feels like some type of miracle is being sent to you. And you know, I'm a big believer like that miracles just don't happen out of the blue. They happen because you deserve them. You know, there may be changes you've made, something that you've cleared. And I feel like a miracle just to me means it's something that shows up just in the right time, right? Just right when I needed it. And then we have family. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, and healing. So miracles and family. I will read this from read them from the book at the end of the reading. I hope you stick around. Um, you know, and the reason why I said that is because the way I read Tarot, I read it like a story. It's like your movie, your book. And it takes time for it to like develop, to really open up. Um, so patience sometimes is needed, but of course, that's totally up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the Romance Angels. We're going to go ahead and give them a couple shuffles. Let's give them a cut. And let's begin. Interesting. Past life relationship. Interesting because I just did a past life reading. And I have to say, I loved it. Past life relationship. You have known each other before. You've known each other before. Hmm. Whoa. We have finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Hmm, interesting. So, I kind of feel like Miracle is potentially a helping hand. Let's see. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Well, that makes sense because you were in a past life together. Now, I know that may not mean everyone. But I feel like you would feel it. And I also feel like if this is talking about, let's say someone new who's coming into your life, they're going to feel very familiar. You may have even, um, you know, like similar morals, um, similar experiences. Getting to know each other. You know, it's interesting. I notice how this woman is sitting with her child and here's this man, it's almost like stating his case. You know, he's in a very upright position. It's like he is trying to be, hmm, what's the word I want to use? Respectful. And the daughter, like paying attention to what this man has to say. It's almost like the daughter protecting the mother. Like, you're coming into my life, you better be treating my mother right. Or father. I know we have male, um, both female and male here. Uh, stay optimistic about your love life. Stay optimistic. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. You no, know, a lot of people don't believe that. But what I have learned, one of the main things I've learned through Tarot and just my spirituality is that our positive intentions bring back things to be grateful for, people to be grateful for. So I do feel like it's important we think about, like, what am I thinking about? Um, you know, if you're not interested in love, then you can certainly shut that door and be like, no, thank you. I don't feel like it stops someone from coming in. It just may be your response to them. So anyways, stay optimistic about your love life. 
mirroring past life relationship. All right, I'm going to slide these all over. Give myself a lot of room. And let's go ahead and bring in the good tarot. I have to say, Scorpio, your readings never disappoint. They are always interesting. There is always peaks and valleys. Um, I have definitely seen your growth. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is, like, I remember, let's just say back in the beginning of the year, like, where there were so many people getting really difficult cards. Um, but, I, but I see it changing. I see it changing. I see it evolving. So I feel like you yourself are evolving. All right. Let's go ahead and give them a cut. Kind of hard to handle for my little hands. Okay. Let me just take a second and just calm my energy down. This is a great time for you to ask your own spirit guides to bring you signs of confirmation, you know, whether a reading is for you, whether a particular part of the reading is for you, or the whole reading may be for you. So, you know, ask your spirit guides to send you clarification, confirmation. All right, let's begin. Well, we start with justice, part of Libra. Um, you know, justice can talk about quite a few things. You talk about karmic, like karmic relationships. Um, it can talk about certainly cutting ties to something. That's usually what it means. But justice is really about making you whole again. What's fair and just within your own life. Coming into your first card, I feel like um, I feel like this is about making you whole again. But some of you may have just cut ties. Oh, I just noticed the eleven. I don't know why that's standing out to me. Number eleven. You know, she has a sword down. So I feel like you know she's not in any type of defensive. Um, in a defensive mode, almost like I've already cut those ties. And listen, with justice, I feel like as soon as I cut ties, and and it can mean to a person, it can mean to a situation, it can even mean our own thought system. But I feel like as soon as we do cut those ties, we find balance, because that's what justice is about, balance. You know, both scales now equally balanced. We have the Eight of Fire, Eight of Wands. This is, to me, what I think about, I bring about. Also fast-moving energy. When I think about, I bring about. Number eight. Eight, to me, is about a new beginning. And allowing myself to have this new beginning. You know, it's interesting because I feel like you may be cutting ties to someone or something. And very quickly you start to see the change. We have, well, seven of swords. Okay, so hopefully that's what you cut the ties to. Seven of Swords, you know, the meaning of the card is deception, envy, um, lies. You know, this is someone who takes more than they need. It can come from, do you know, you know what it reminds me of? Like, um, like someone who grew up in a big family and there wasn't a lot of food to go around and they take more than their fair share. Because they know there's not a lot to go. So, like, they still 
from their brothers and sisters' plates, so to speak. I hope this is what justice is representing, because again, this is energy that I can't really trust. Um, but I also want to say, sometimes it can be our own thoughts. We have the King of Air, the King of Swords. Could certainly be a Libra for some of you because it is mirroring justice. I feel like someone is not communicating um, or when they are communicating, they, not, they may not be telling you the truth about something, but I feel like you would know this, like you know this already. You know, I don't want to put this king down already, um, but he's coming right next to the Seven of Swords. And the King of, of Swords is about communication, integrity. But yet next to the Seven of Swords, I feel like, well, that kind of wipes that out. And mirroring justice is like, okay. Hmm. All right, well, we'll see. But at this moment, I'm not feeling so great about him. By the way, it can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but it doesn't have to be any of that because I feel like it's talking about some type of communication where, um, you know, you may not be, someone may not be, may not be truthful with you. We have the Queen of Fire, Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. Look how she's got that flame so close to her heart chakra. Um, this can be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But this is a queen who moves according to her passions, her desires. You know, I don't feel like, the, and by the way, I feel like you're all people in a reading unless I feel it otherwise. I don't feel like you're this king, but I do feel like you're this queen. And I feel like this is about you just being, you know, truthful and honest with yourself and following your path. You know, she is, she's intuitive and she's really not fear-based. Doesn't mean she never was, but sitting as the queen, she's thinking about what is it I want in my life now? What passions do I have? What can I bring to the world? Under justice. I just realized that flame is in the sharp is in the shape of a heart. Hello, Will. They call it fortune's will in this deck. I call it destiny. Um, you know, and it's interesting because I said justice can certainly represent a karmic, like a karmic relationship. But don't beat yourself up over that if you got stuck in that. Um, because really a karmic relationship is about learning, like learning from it. And once you learn the lessons of that karmic relationship, you know, maybe I just needed to really have my eyes open. Um, you know. Call a liar a liar, so to speak. But I feel like this is about you moving on, these, these, um, the beginning of this reading. So if you felt like you were in this karmic relationship, some type of karmic ties, I feel like simply by cutting those ties, the wheel starts moving. And it's coming under the aid of wands. Again, fast moving energy. You know, it's like, I feel this queen, like she knows what she wants. She knows, it doesn't mean she has it yet, but she knows what how she wants her life to look. I don't feel like this queen and this king, if he's carrying any type of deception, deceptive energy, I don't feel like she'd put up with it. Not for long, anyway. 
destiny. And it's coming in quick. Hmm. Okay, that's exactly what I was feeling. So the Page of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles is about learning. You know, what lessons am I learning in this lifetime? Excuse me, just one second. Okay, sorry about that. I got a little knock on my door. Come and knock on my door. Anyways, Page of Pentacles. Um, you definitely feel like... You know, I feel like a lot of you have been going through, let's just say, some difficult situations, maybe dealing with difficult people. Um, but I feel like this is talking about the lessons that you've learned from it. Some of you, um, you know, I feel like you're building up your pentacles and uh, it may be like something that you feel mm, passionate about. And, you know, page can mean, like, I don't know 100% if, like, if this is the right path, right? But I'm learning. I'm going to keep going forward. I feel like you're definitely learning over the Seven of Swords. So, again, I feel like if someone is trying to pull a wool over your eyes, I don't feel like they're going to be able to. I feel like, I just feel like... And I and I kind of feel the Queen of Wands opening up this lie, uh, this line. Interesting, I said lie. Um, that I just don't feel like you put up with it. Again, maybe you have for a while, but because her her sword is down, I feel like whatever whatever ties whoever was working against me, and then that number eleven is standing out for me. Um, and to me, like I'm thinking for some reason, 1111, which to me, when I see 1111, I always make a wish. And it's interesting. I always make that wish for my daughter, who's a Scorpio. Um, so anyways, Page of Pentacles. Let's not forget that Miracle is here. Brought to you by Mother Mary. So there's a miracle that's going to show. And just how I said in the beginning of the reading, like, I feel like miracles aren't things that just land in your lap. It's because of action steps that you've taken. And I feel like they land or they come to you at just the right time also. I feel like you're taking the power away from someone. You know, first I have this realization. And listen, I'm not going to say this king. I should wait until I get another card. But I'm not going to say that he is a horrible person. Um, he, she. But I am going to say that I feel like, at least if nothing else, there's some white lies being told. And I don't know. Maybe as a Virgo, I feel like, you know... If you lie, even if they're little lies, then I have a very hard time trusting you, period. I feel like this wheel is ready to move. And I feel like this wheel, once it starts moving, it's moving quickly. And that may be another reason why you do want to think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it really is your intentions. You know, the Eight of Wands reminds us that we're planting seeds. You know, our intentions are our seeds. And to really have a harvest, we have to plant these seeds. We have to be bold enough. And I feel like this is about dreaming big. You know what I mean? Even after the fact. Oh, excuse me again. Interesting. Sam doesn't normally interrupt me this often. <laughs> um, but that was that he was at my door again. All right. So let's keep going. What you got to say, King of Swords? What you got to say? Hmm. 
messenger of air. This is the Knight of Swords. But look what comes out after it, the hangman. I feel like someone's just talking. Someone's talking and they're spewing lies, you know, or little untruths. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to over exaggerate, but I do feel like there's someone around you who is just like telling you, like communicating in, um, you know, I almost feel like it's someone who they feel somewhat immature to me, even though they're standing here as a king, there feels like there's an immaturity level to them. But boy, I do feel like that energy of whatever communication is coming from this king, I don't know that I trust it. And then you have the hangman. It's almost like representing you saying, you know, let's say this king is saying, let's do this, let's do that. Because don't forget, you have the wheel. You have movement. By the way, I just want to say, there's no way to, that I feel this king of swords is also who's ever in this past life relationship. I don't feel that at all. I, I don't even feel love. You know, and, and I really do allow myself to feel the energies. I don't feel it. What I feel is your power. What I feel is you having these realizations. So the hangman. First of all, the hangman can represent seeking wisdom. Um, you know, from from your spiritual team, let's say, or even God. Um, but for your next steps help guide me. I always feel like the hangman receives it. This can be a pause in the action. Some of you may still be on the fence of whether cutting ties. And I'm not trying to make this king look bad. I just don't feel good about him right now. And I'm going to say one more thing. Poor king. Um, I feel like this king's energy and maybe even like his communication, you know, it, it feels like someone who like if I went and told him like my dreams, like this is what I really like to do in the world. I have a feeling they would be like, that's kind of stupid. You know, like I doubt you'll be successful. You know, the someone who put you down instead of lifting you up. Hmm. But maybe the hangman is you needing to come to that realization on your own, like you believing within you. Again, the queen of wands is someone who she does follow her intuition. Um, she doesn't let fear. And you have all these swords over here, but then this beautiful energy over here. And I feel like this is you. This is what's happening. You know, the hangman could have certainly been a pause in the action for something that you want to do. But then again, maybe that's the miracle that's coming in. Well, hello, Nine of Cups. First of all, this is your card. This is inner harmony. Coming under the wheel. Some of you, I do feel like you may be... Well, listen... It, this would be something you've already considered or you're already there. I read nine as singular energy. So maybe I'm saying goodbye to this king. And by doing so, it brings me inner harmony. And then don't forget the nine of cups is also fulfillment of wishes. Well, coming under the wheel. Also, again, miracle. And the Eight of Wands above it. When I think about, I bring about. This is when you're able to, I don't know, I kind of feel like relax in your life again. And then we have the Hierophant. Interesting, because this is your opposite. This is Taurus. And, you know. I'm not trying to connect the two of you in a romantic way, but I have to say, I feel like 
there's a couple signs that I really love together and Taurus and Scorpio are one of them. I really feel they help fulfill each other. Now, beyond that, um, this is really about your belief system. You know, are you living your life according to your beliefs, to your morals? You know, are you, you know, and it's a five, so it does speak about change. So I feel like you, this means that you question those, those certain areas in your life. Like, am I living life the way that, that is important to me? Or have I been living my life according to someone else's standards? You know, mirroring that seven of swords, I feel like this is really saying, trust what you feel. Trust your intuition. Really trust your intuition above all. You know, this this speaks of uh, keeping the faith. Knowing that even, in, even if I've been through this difficult situation and I did cut ties and that can be hard, even if it's someone, you know, I mean, I remember cutting ties to people that, you know, treated me terribly and you still have these moments of missing them. You know, and it takes time, I feel like, when you start to look back and be like, okay, I no longer miss that. But in the moment, it can be, you know, it can be a little bit difficult. So this may just say, keep your faith alive, hope. Right next to the Nine of Cups. And let's shoot for one more. Wow, I like that a lot. Six of Wands. This is victory and success, my friends. Victory and success. In what? In your life. In whatever it is. That, you know, again, I feel like this queen, she cut some ties. She's thinking differently. She's putting positive intentions out there. She's believing in herself again. The wheel is responding. It moves into that Nine of Cups energy, inner harmony, but also fulfillment of a wish. So I feel like this queen is now following her passions, her desires. And reaching the energy of success. So those who told you that you wouldn't be successful, that what you had in mind, um, wouldn't work out they were wrong they were wrong you know but you had to believe it and i feel like that's part of what this journey has been about believing like re-believing in yourself reclaiming yourself your truth your faith your morals you know living according to those morals victory and success you know, and it's mirroring the hangman. So I do feel like there's a few of you who question, like, can I truly have success in my life? You know, if I move forward with this idea and I shut out these naysayers, can I reach, you know, well, success? The answer is yes. Now, this can look differently for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, I love that the Nine of Cups is here first. And it's coming under the, the wheel. So that inner fulfillment and then a fulfillment of a wish. And then victory. And I love that it's coming next to the Hierophant because it's like being victorious because you're reclaiming your faith, your power. You know, I feel like you're trusting in your intuition more than ever. All right, let's look at the bottom of the deck. Well, hello, Knight of Cups. So, unexpected couple fulfillment coming your way. You know, this is an energy I always, I want to say that you can't plan for it, but then I always want to stop myself and say, well, 
you know, love happens truly in unexpected ways. And if you just look back at your own life, you know, and think about like your chapters with certain people, you didn't plan it. It just happened. But I feel like um, the one thing you can do, though, is think about your intentions. You know, when you're with someone who lies a lot or cheats, you know, like it can go the whole way from deception. They do it because they're envious. Um, you know, it can even come from their childhood, whatever it is. When I shut that down, and I feel like that's what I got to do, just shut it down. Even if I can't get away from this person, let's say at this moment, I can certainly shut down my ears, you know, stop listening to the negative things that they're telling you. And, you know, believe in yourself again. You know, this Knight of Cups, again, unexpected cup of fulfillment. We have the Five of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, underneath that. Interesting. Some of you, you know, it can be someone you know, or it can be someone from a past life. You know, and something I skipped over, I love the page of Pentacles next to the wheel because I feel like as this relates to your money, let's say, or what you're doing in the world or what you want to do in the world, um, I feel like this is also a very good omen. You know, even if I'm just beginning, I feel like you will see the fruits of your labor. So that I feel like is what victory is talking about. Not just seeing the fruits of your labor, but also the willingness and the ableness to like cut those energetic, at least energetic ties to those who really have nothing positive to say anyway. And I love that you actually land in this nine of cups. So you finding this inner harmony and the wishes that are being fulfilled are for you. And that's why I always feel like nine is a singular energy. You know, let's say this is a family member and I really can't get away from them. I can still cut out the noise, right? Cut out that noise and come back to myself. So I love that we have the nine of cups and now we have the knight of cups and I feel like that's pulling us right back to a past life relationship, especially with the Five of Cups under it. You know, I feel like that Five of Cups, the meaning of the Five of Cups is it asks you to look at what you're thinking about. Like, what are you focusing on? Are you focus, focusing on, you know, the things or the people you have lost? Um, the danger in that, in, in that energy is it can turn into woe is me. And I feel like we've all been there. Um, but truly, in the Five of Cups, it's a five. It's about change. So it's a change of focus. And what's behind the person in the Five of Cups? Two cups. Two cups. Well, that pulls me again right back to past life relationships. Okay. Interesting. Let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Tarot. Give it a couple shuffles. Let's do one more. One more. One is the loneliest number. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm singing that song. One is the loneliest number. However, sometimes it's not. Sometimes being alone, um, I feel great. Not always. But I feel like if I'm alone, but doing, you know, but I'm, I'm proactive in my life and following my desires, then being alone isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, and I also feel like you probably won't be alone I know you won't be alone forever. 
um, but maybe, you know, you're going to reconnect with someone sooner versus later. We'll see. And, you know, I really want to hammer home that this is not just a love reading. This is saying that if you follow your desires, your passions, as it relates to your creativity or what it is you do in the world, that you will be successful, that you will see the fruits of those of your labor, um, you know, as long as you're putting that effort in there. You know, some of you may just be starting. You may just have, like, come back to yourself again. And you may be receiving epiphanies and it may be pulling you in a certain direction. Um, and if you feel that within your intuition, I would follow it. You know, I feel like that's my whole life. Like, you know, the air, like, you know, like Tarot. This is not something I ever planned in my life. I didn't even know anything about Tarot um, in the first half of my life. But I definitely feel like my interest was peaked. And then... Interesting, I just responded to someone's comment where she felt she was getting like all these uh, like epiphanies and like towards her spirituality and she feels like she can't get enough. Well, that's what I felt. So I totally understood what she meant. Like, um, and it didn't start with Tro, it was my spirituality and it was overall, it was because of a loss. It was, um, you know, I'll just tell you real quick, because it's really quite an amazing story. My brother was, um, he was in the hospital, and he was on life support. And my brother, Mike, um, and it's interesting, because I felt kind of all alone. Um, I don't know why, but like my dad couldn't, just couldn't see him in that way. So he never came to the hospital. My brother lived in the state of Washington and my sister decided to um, go out of town. So it was just me and I had to make that decision. Um, and, you know, I listened to the doctors and they did suggest that I take him off life support. So I did. Um, and then he was on he was without life support for like two weeks but he, but unresponsive and i was with him day and night um and i was sitting in the room with him one day and i was just reading out loud to him and to myself you know i was just reading a book but reading it out loud and when i was doing that you know he had a big hosp um his room was pretty big because there was a, a couch that pulled onto a bed for me. Um, something made me turn my head. And when I did, I saw two white shadows come through the crack at the top of the door. And, you know, they were in almost a human form, but they were wispy. But they were white. And they were large. And they came into the room. And it was like slow motion. You know, I felt like I was meant to see them. They wanted me to see them. And they came over to his bed. And I remember standing up and I just blessed him real quick. You know, I just said a prayer to God, like, please, God, like, take his soul to heaven, please. And next thing I saw was his soul rise. And then the three of them were then gone, just like that. Well, that. I mean, that changed my whole life because after that day, I went to the library and I started taking out all kinds of books on what that could have been. You know, I wasn't I wasn't really a spiritual person at that time. Um, but boy, that changed everything for me. You know, it, it also showed me that there's an afterlife. Um, I definitely felt the energy of love with them. And I felt like it was my mother and my grandmother. Um, but yeah, I felt love. I didn't feel like I felt a little scared for a second, but then I felt very calm and I don't know. So why am I telling you this? I forget why I'm even telling you this. Hmm. Anyway, somebody probably needed to hear that story. 
All right. Hmm. I remember now it was it was the um, person who said that they felt inspired to learn more and more and more. And that's exactly how I felt. All right. So we're going to start at the beginning. Well, but we're going to read him as a whole. We have the three of cups coming over justice. We have the Six of Wands, beautiful, which we also have down here, Victory and Success, coming over the Eight of Wands, fast-moving energy. And then we had a card go off the table, excuse me. Look at this, Justice again. Right over that Seven of Swords now. I mean, goodbye, liar. You know, I love that the Three of Cups came over justice. Because to me, the Three of Cups speaks about joy. And I know that cutting ties, you know, let's say this is a, like a long-standing relationship. I know it doesn't mean that it's easy. But for some reason, I'm feeling like it gives you joy very quickly. The Three of Cups is also a reason to celebrate. So that means something's coming in to give you a reason to celebrate. And then you move next to the Eight of Wands. Again, what I think about, I bring about. And also fast-moving energy. And then we have victory and success. And then justice right over that Seven of Swords. So do I feel like that is the energy that is being cut out of your life? I do. Or at least this is what, you know, you're being advised to at least consider. We have the Hermit. Carter Virgo. It can certainly be a Virgo for some. But here's really what I feel. I feel like someone has taken you through the dark night of the soul. You know, you may have given someone a lot of time. The hermit to me is, you know, when I'm in that dark night of the soul, it's finding the light. And it may mean finding your truth. And what else I love about this, just because I just spoke about this, I feel like this is the energy of also taking the things that I have learned through probably my most difficult experiences and then helping others. The hermit's lantern is facing towards the future. And I also love that underneath that lantern is a snake. And I feel like what is representing to you is if there's any snakes in the grass, you're going to see them. You're going to know them. This is very spiritual energy. But I also feel like this is the energy of understanding that we can save ourselves. You're like, I'm seeking the light. And I feel like in the hermit's energy, I realize I am the light. I can save myself. And I could see many of you then taking these experiences. And it doesn't mean that you're creating a business from it. But speaking about it, maybe even helping others. Because again, that lantern is looking outward, not inward. So to me, that means the hermit has emerged from that cave, has emerged from that dark night of the soul, wiser than when I went in. Hello, Empress. Beautiful. So it's interesting because um, in which one was it? Um, getting to know each other. Getting to know each other. I felt like, well, I mean, we could see the image where there was a mother and the daughter was on her lap and 
kind of like listening to everything that this new person coming in has to say in a protective type of way. Almost like the mother is saying, you know, we are a package deal. This is the mother figure, by the way. But you know what else I love about the Empress? This is someone who's very creative, who is always receiving epiphanies. And I feel like we all are receiving epiphanies, ideas, signs, but not everybody puts them to use. Not everyone believes in the signs, but the Empress does. The Empress is also someone who doesn't allow the people of the past to shut down her heart. You know, she is of a higher vibration, but it is because of her experiences. It is because of the things that she's overcome. And I feel like she's walked the path of all the queens. And now I'm wise, strong, loving, nurturing. All of the above. And coming over the Queen of Wands, I feel like whatever epiphanies I'm receiving in this energy, I am putting them to use. I'm giving birth to them. Two threes back to back. 33. The Empress, strong, beautiful, loving, creative energy. And then the Three of Cups, joy, a reason to celebrate. All right. Mm, five of Swords. Over the wheel. So, Five of Swords talks about the toxicity that you may be around. But listen, I feel like because it's coming over the wheel, don't beat yourself up over it. This could be, again, some type of karmic lesson. It definitely has taught you something. And I feel like the one thing it's taught you is I'm not going to surround myself with toxic type of people. Change. The number five. So you're definitely having this realization of at least the energies around you and, you know, which ones are truthful and which ones are more toxic or drama filled. And I just feel like you are not putting up with it anymore. The sun, beautiful. Sun over the page of pentacles. It's like the sun will come out tomorrow. You know, this is the illuminator. This is also the masculine's energy. Also the ruler of Leo. But I feel like what it's really doing, it's illuminating your decisions on whether, you know, whether I made the right decision or not. It's also illuminating the lessons just to help you learn and then put them behind you. It's also a brand new day. And the sun is out. You know, what I also love about the sun is any energy that's done in the dark it comes to the light with the sun. So it's almost like undeniable. Especially because it's right next to the five of swords. Beautiful. Look at this. We have the emperor and the empress mirroring each other. Well, my power couple. My power couple. I say that because both the emperor and the empress care about their fellow man and woman, their brothers and sisters. They're people who really want to help lift people up. They may go about it in different ways. The, the emperor is much more methodical, like, you know, puts plans in place. Where the Empress is just more like, I feel it, I'm going to do it. I have a feeling. Now, the Emperor is a card of Aries, but 
that aside, I feel like what it's really saying is this may just be your match. And again, I feel like it's tying back to past life lovers. And that makes sense because I feel like the similarities in their life, though different, still very much the same. And the sun coming over the emperor or next to the emperor, I feel like it's saying this is someone of the light. That means truthful, honest. And then the hermit right above it. You know, it just feels like a completely different person than the King of Swords. And then we have the Page of Cups. Page of Cups, this is your inner child. This is the part of you that's taken these injuries. And this is where I have to learn to heal them. Learn to love myself again. I also feel a page, again, talks about what's in the atmosphere. And that would be love. It is mirroring the three of swords. It is coming over the hangman. So, it could certainly speak about love. Some of you, it can be someone you know. You already know. But I feel like if you do, it's probably been quite some time. Hmm, interesting. And because it's mirroring the Three of Cups, to me, that makes perfect sense. You know, it's like, it's almost like your spiritual team is saying, here's this Knight of Cups, right, that really does carry love. Versus this Seven of Swords that just is dishonest. Here is the sun that's illuminating everything to you, making it pretty clear. And then the emperor and the empress mirroring each other. So I feel like, and then the nine of cups, where I feel like it's singular energy. That just feels like the perfect timing for love now to start to enter into your life. Again, the nine of cups speaks about unexpected like I come at an unexpected time but boy do I feel like now you're ready for it even if you 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 know you may not even have that on your mind you may be like you know what I'm gonna do my thing I'm gonna build my life I'm gonna I'm gonna allow these these creative um endeavors to come out you know, I'm going to take the lessons and instead of like being sorrow, like sorry for them or beating oneself up. Now I understand that really what I was doing was learning. And let me tell you, the one thing the sun is illuminating is what you no longer want. I mean, don't lie to a Scorpio. I feel like that's what the hangman is representing too. Like once you come back to yourself again, once you trust within yourself again, once you shut out that noise of what is really untruth anyway, I feel like it, it allows you to really open up all parts of yourself. And that's what I feel with the emperor and the empress. You know, um, all parts of themselves are now open. Their spirituality their belief in themselves, their caring for their fellow man, helping, you know, helping to give hands up, not a hand out. You know, I feel like anyone who has toxic energy at this point, good luck trying to enter into the Empress's energy. And with the sun right next to the emperor, I don't feel that. Like, I feel like this is talking about someone who is probably very similar to you. Again, you may have discussions and be like, whoa, we have a lot of similar situations that happened in our life. 
I don't feel like this is someone of a low vibration. I feel like this is someone of a high vibration. You know, the emperor is normally someone we can look up to. But I feel like the emperor also looks up to the empress. They build each other up. They really are perfect counterparts. All right, let's keep going. Scorpio, I love your reading. I'm telling you, your readings never disappoint. They're like, they're always like a beautiful story. Um, you know, with the peaks and the valleys, but this is like after the fact. Okay, we had a card flipped over. Two cards. All right. So, Nine of Swords. So, this is the energy of worry. Sleepless nights. You know. Um, but the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. It's coming over the Nine of Cups. So I feel like this is what was. Especially with the Five of Swords right above it. Like, who can I trust? Who can I not trust? In the Nine of Swords, sometimes it's hard to trust your own intuition. Your own intuition. But because of the evolution that you, you're having, I feel like... That's exactly why the Two of Wands follows it. So I feel like this Nine of Swords is old energy. doesn't mean fear can't raise its head. It just means I'm no longer willing to let fear stop me from moving forward. And that's what the Two of Wands is about, moving forward. Stepping onto this new path. And it's Wands. So, desirable, passionate, fear is not part of it. Even if there's a tiny little bit of fear, it won't stop you. Hello, Knight of Pentacles. I know exactly what this Knight of Pentacles is doing here. This is the one who's ushering in that miracle. You know, the Knight of Pentacles, to me, is your guardian angel. This is the guide that steps forward at this time. Knight of Pentacles is a slow-moving knight, but it moves slow with purpose. A lot of times, I feel like it's really waiting on us. Knight of Pentacles reminds you that I come at the right time. And what I bring is meant to truly enhance your life. We only have to see what's mirroring it over here, that Three of Cups. A reason to celebrate. That I come at the right time. Not before, not after. It's coming over the energy of victory and success. And it's also you stepping forward in this new journey. Whatever it may be, you're stepping forward. And here comes this knight. And then the page of swords. Interesting. This could be some type of communication. You know, what else is interesting? We have the page of cups mirroring the page of swords over here. With the knight of cups really ushering in this page. So this may be something that truly does feel like a miracle, especially after the fact. And I feel like what the knight is saying is it does take you to take a step forward in your future, in your dreams, you know, like the willingness to say yes, to trust in yourself. And then I feel like this night, first of all, it's helping you reach victory. But it could also be some type of communication that's probably coming from this Knight of Cups. Two pages. And maybe each one of these pages had something they each had to learn. You know, this page over here, Page of Cups, how to learn to love myself again. 
trust myself, not close off my heart due to other people's energies, right? But now I can trust, you know, now I can trust myself on who I can trust. Page of Swords over here can talk about someone who's really learning to communicate. You know, can it tie back to this King of Swords? It could, but honestly, I don't feel that. Because I feel like this is the energy that's being cut out. And we got to let it fade away. Again, the Knight of Pentacles. I come in exactly the right time. I know it's bringing this miracle. It feels like a miracle. But now you can understand how I said in the beginning. I feel like miracles happen because of... Of... You being bold within your own life. You making these changes. And it's like your spiritual team sees it. And, you know, it's like even in the beginning where I said some of you, this could have been a karmic relationship. Well, just like bad karma, there is also good karma. And boy, does this feel like good karma. Again, the will is here. So this is a destined time in your life. But it feels like, it kind of feels like night and day. Like the energy I was in, the people I did surround myself with. And when I said no more, enough is enough. Um, even if it took me a moment, it, there's no judgment on how long it takes someone. You know what I mean? Like each in their own time. Um, you know, and if this is also talking about a past life relationship with love, let's just say, then same thing. It's like when you're ready. Well, though, I still feel like, you know, I say that, but I still feel like, and again, we have this nine of cups down here, which inner harmony and fulfillment of a wish. And we know the night is bringing that wish in or that miracle in. And I feel like as you, listen, you may still be up in this energy and this may just be showing you a roadmap to a different way of living your life, you know, reclaiming your power and knowing that, you know, this person could have certainly been said to you like, oh, there's no one else out there who's going to love you. Well, they are so wrong so wrong and that comes from their limited thought system because the emperor and the empress mirroring each other to me i mean as it relates to love that's one of the things i look for some of you could certainly relate to a twin flame relationship that may be why that 11 really stood out to me the sun does represent masculine Sitting right next to the emperor. Wow. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring in this little deck. And um, this is from that company that I'm partnering with. I haven't done the video for them yet. And the main reason is I want to use some of these cards. Um, because I want to give an honest review. I'm not someone who's just going to say, if I don't like them, like, oh, you should go get them. No, I want to make sure that they feel good. All right. What should we look at? Hmm. I don't even know what to look at. I feel like this reading is so clear. Let's go the whole way up to past life relationship. Scorpio. The Ace of Cups. Wow. Unconditional love. Probably not just in this lifetime. Probably in every lifetime. Probably for eternity. You know, it's like you've always loved each other. Maybe you haven't always been in each other's lifetime. 
But the love has always been there. The Ace of Cups. Wow. Okay. That's who the Knight of Cups is then. I'm not even going to question that. I mean, and there's that Three of Cups right beside it, right? A reason to celebrate. The energy of feeling joyous, like feeling the joy. Even if I'm only stepping into it. The Two of Wands, to me, just means I'm willing to step into it. I don't, you know, I don't need to know, like, is this going to go the whole way? Because... Because of free will, you know, it's really determined by each person. But does it have the potential? Well, hell yeah. Huh. Okay. Um. What do I want to look at then? Let's look at the Empress. Two of Wands. And the Five of Swords. I have a hard time reading that. Two of Wands and the Five of Swords. Five of Swords is that toxic energy. You know, it's other people. I'm not going to say it never means our own thoughts. But then the Two of Wands. Again, it's interesting because right next to the Empress is the Five of Swords. But now it's showing you leaving that energy not allowing it to affect you so let's go right over to the emperor look at this another ace the ace of wands uh, i mean I'm coming in. It's just the way it is. You can accept me or not. I feel like you are ready to accept me. This is inspired action. And what I mean by that, especially with the Knight of Pentacles right below the Emperor, this person may have just felt inspired to reach out to you. And again, you may not know each other. But you do. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like when these two, like, strike up a conversation, let's say, I feel like part of that conversation will be talking about the similarities within each of their lives, but also their morals and how both of them really do. Do you know, I feel like they love to help people. We have the Knight of Wands. It's like this Emperor is being inspired and then making the movement. Knight of Wands means, you know, I feel like every Knight's going to complete their mission. And it feels like this Emperor's first being inspired, maybe by their spiritual team, and then making that movement. We have... Look at that. The Knight of Pentacles again. We have the Seven of Swords. We have... It's called the, the, the Hanged One here. Which is weird. To say the Hangman. And then... Hello, Six of Wands. You know, okay, so the Seven of Swords came out. But so did the Knight of Pentacles. And it just kind of verifies to me that both of you have gone through these similar situations. Both of you probably dealt with untrustworthy people. You know, liars. And I don't know if I could, should keep saying liars, but, you know... I just know their energy is not good for you. And I'm talking about this King of Swords up there. But then the Knight of Pentacles comes out again. 
you know, with that ace of wands and that knight of wands. So when I say the knight of wands down here is your guardian angel, well, it almost feels like you share guardian angels. It's like, you know, like how I feel my spiritual team connects to your spiritual team. That's what I'm feeling here. And it feels like this emperor is coming in the right time because the hangman, right? The hangman may be, again, a pause in the action. But again, I feel like it's because I'm waiting and maybe I don't even know it. But all of a sudden I get this inspiration to make communication with you. And then it turns into victory and success. Look at the similarities. The Knight of Pentacles over victory and success. The Knight of Pentacles marrying victory and success. Both of you have the Seven of Swords energy. Both of you have the Hangman's energy. But this Emperor now is being inspired to come forward. And you, over here with the Two of Wands, I feel like this is going to be a yes. And again, it doesn't mean like I'm like going right into a commitment type energy, but I'm going to put my foot in the water. I'm going to put my feet in the water. Wow. Okay. It's like I don't I was going to clarify the Knight of Pentacles, but I but I don't need to anymore. Because this Knight of Pentacles is what's really inspiring probably both of you to, well, let me put it a different way. This Knight of Pentacles is really, I feel like, responsible for ushering the two of you together. And I do feel like it will be in divine timing because, again, the Knight of Pentacles comes in in the right time. And that means that you're ready. That means that they're ready. Wow. What a reading. What a reading. You know, this is a point where I get in a reading where I think, how in God's name am I going to title this reading? Where you can see the beauty in it. All right, I'm just going to take one more spin around and I'm just going to go right in the middle of the reading. I'm not really looking at anything, just any more messages that want to come out. Come on out. I don't want you to forget that we have this Knight of Cups, right? An unexpected cup of fulfillment. First, it feels like you're finding this inner harmony within yourself first and foremost, um, but then it speaks about a fulfillment of a wish. This night or this past life relationship has the Ace of Cups over it now. So I know it's that is who is in this Knight of Cups. Your guardian angels, both the Emperor and the Empress, and you are, you know, if you're a male, you may be the Emperor. If you're a female, you may be the Empress. Then remember, we all carry masculine and feminine energy. The sun to me represents masculine. So sitting next to the emperor. We have the king of swords. So it is female. King of Swords, I don't know. I really didn't mean to put it. Well, I, I did. I wanted to go right across the middle. But now I'm looking and realizing that this King of Swords is sitting right over the Five of Cups. I'm sorry, the Five of Swords. That toxic energy. And below it is that Nine of Swords. So I feel like this King has given you reasons to worry. But I do feel like... Potentially, that's the past. Of course, it depends where you're at in this reading. All right, let's take what space up first. We have 
four of wands. Hmm. We have the four of swords. That's healing. Interesting, two fours back to back. First of all, the four of wands, they call the marriage card. I call it the commitment card. One of my favorite love cards because I know who's ever in that four of wands. And by the way, I do not think it's this king. I feel like this king of swords coming over the five of cups or the, why do I keep saying cups? The five of swords and connected to that nine of swords. I feel like it's very clear to me that this just, listen, it could have been good, but I don't feel like it's good anymore. Um, and this may be somebody who's already in your past. And maybe what you, you've you been in the energy of trying to move on from that. And part of this may say, like, you need to, like, trust yourself again. But anyways, that four of wands, you know, that's a true commitment. And then the four of swords, that's healing. I kind of feel like the emperor and the empress are going to help heal each other. Those last broken little pieces, we're going to heal each other. Maybe it was always meant to be that way. And then look at this, the Ace of Swords. Wow. And then look who just jumped to the other side of the board, the Empress. So now, I know you can't see it, but she's literally now connected to the Emperor. She's moved from this side of the board to this side of the board. This King of Swords is coming over the toxic energy. There's no question in my mind anymore. This Emperor and Empress, I feel like not only can they help heal those last broken pieces, but I feel like they're just going to, you know, I feel like there's going to be, you're going to feel so familiar to me. And it may take, with the Ace of Swords, the communication, right? But the Ace of Swords represents, first of all, it's my yes card, but it can represent um, conversation. Good conversation. And maybe even through this conversation, we help heal each other because you are, you both have dealt with very similar type energies. And it's also interesting how I said, you know, like in a reading, I'm not really looking like where do these two people end up? Like, do they end up, let's say, in mar in marriage? Um, because, because I know that there's free will. Um, and no one can really interrupt that. But I feel like with the four of wands coming out, well, hello, potential. Hello, potential of either future marriage, but definitely future commitment. And man, do I feel like the emperor and empress, like, because the wheel's also here, like, what was destined, especially with the ace of cups coming over past life relationship. You know, I don't know why I'm picking this up, but I feel like in a past life, you could have been like a queen and a king like royalty um but then again you could have been the opposite but whatever it is you are helping to heal each other um you know those broken little pieces listen these two people they are going to lift each other up there's no doubt in my mind they're meant to fall in love there's no doubt in my mind um you know, but I feel first and foremost, this is about each one of them, you know, being truthful and honest with themselves within their own lives, you know, cutting ties. That's probably why we see justice twice. We see victory and success twice. It's mirroring. You guys are mirroring each other. You're mirroring each other. And both of you are carrying the energy of success. And I'm not going to forget about Mother Mary saying that there is going to be a miracle. It was your very first card. Uh, 
All right. I feel like I'm going to leave it there, but I want to read Mother Mary. Um, and I'm going to start with family, and then I'm going to read Miracle. You know, and the reason why I'm reading family first is because sometimes when we're in, it's right by father, um, interesting because we have the mother and the father energy. Though, again, I'm reminded of this mother and daughter where someone is like trying to, what's the word I want to use? Like an old fashioned um an old fashioned term for wanting to date. There's, I can't think of the word. Um, mm. I can't think of the word, but what I'm really feeling is like this mother and this daughter are a package deal. And there could be someone coming in who is not only going to love you, but also love your children. If you have children, you know, you don't have to have children. Um, but anyway, so let's read family. Your prayers for your family have been heard. Whatever you're concerned about, God has the answers you seek. Since worry can sometimes attract negative experiences, it's essential to give heaven any anxiety about your loved ones. Take a moment right now to breathe deeply and exhale family burdens skyward to God, Mary, and the angels. As you release these cares, fill your heart with faith that in God's wisdom and love, God has a wonderful plan for you and your family. Often prayers, prayers are answered in in different ways. So please don't spend time worrying about how your solution will come about. Instead, trust in God who cares infinitely for you and your family. Amen. And let's read Miracle. You've asked for miracles and they are given. Even if you can't imagine how your present situation could be re resolved, God's infinite wisdom contains a solution. This message offers reassurance that a miracle is manifesting for you and your loved ones. It appears in a completely unexpected way. Hello, Nine of Cups. Mother Mary offers you strength and support during this time. She is a source of great emotional comfort and healing. Lean upon her, especially if your faith wavers. Remember that God works with divine timing and may give you guidance as to the necessary steps for you to take to bring this miracle about. Wow, that's exactly what I feel like is happening with the emperor. He's being inspired. Now, listen, I feel you're also being inspired, but I feel like you're being inspired to like to do the things that make you feel good about you again. But I feel like and and I feel like this is energy he also had to go through, but I feel like he's being inspired to take these action steps to come forward. Amen to this reading. You know, you don't want to skip over the lessons because otherwise it's just a bunch of fluff. Like without learning the lessons, without seeing the potentials of, you know, how I can overcome and how I can start creating a better life for myself, then you're just looking for the beauty within a reading. But I feel like we have to pay attention to all of it. Each, like, I feel like it's been laid out like a plan to follow. And just have trust. You know, that's what the Knight of Pentacles wants you to do. Trust in divine timing. That's what the Knight of Cups talks about. Trust in divine timing. The Ace of Cups right over a past life love. Huh. Oh. Who, who more perfect than the, the Empress and the Emperor? Just beautiful. Though, 
I feel like, you know, I feel like for those who didn't make it to the end, they have no clue about the beauty that potentially lies ahead. Um, because sometimes it's hard to get through the lessons like, ah, I don't want to face that yet. The sun's like, face it all, face it all and walk through it. And just watch how your tomorrow opens up. Scorpio, I loved, loved, loved your reading. And I might even just title that because I don't even know what words to put to this, this reading. I just loved it. And I love you. And I thank you all in the million ways you help support me and this channel. Um, but the love that you send back, I feel it. And I thank you. I love that you share your comments. I feel like that's where we can help lift other people up. And that's really our job. That's our purpose. You know, as we as we overcome these these difficult situations, who better than to help others who are still stuck? That I feel like is our divine purpose. But anyways, loved it. Every bit of it. All right. I'm going to let it be. I love you guys. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.